Okay, for our last demo, we have a, a new PXI system bus that we're very excited about. And in fact, we, we tried to go out and find one of the most challenging applications on the planet to test it out. So uh, to tell us more about this, I'd like to introduce Mike Cerna and Jason Tongan. Hello, John. All right, guys, what do you have? Well, John, over the last few years, we've been uh, working to optimize our software development platforms for high-performance computing or HPC applications, most vi visibly in the area of big physics. Solving some of these computational problems usually require the use of supercomputers or clusters of multi-core machines. And a typical uh, HPC uh, application, it's usually offline. You submit a job and you wait uh, over, the, over the weekend for your answer. What's interesting to us today, though, is the online scenario, where real sensor data feeds sophisticated mathematics and those computations have to keep up with the flow of data. All right, so I get it. In a system like this, the communication bus is critical to make it all work. Right, Jason? That's right. A typical Ethernet-based network can't meet the challenges of many HPC in the loop applications. Today, we're here to talk about a new technology that can address those constraints called PXIMC. PXIMC allows multiple computers to be directly connected over PCI Express links. It was developed by the PXI Systems Alliance and by using PCI Express as the underlying technology, it provides the best combination of data throughput and latency. Compared to gigabit ethernet running TCP, PXIMC provides over 10 times higher data throughput and, and over 100 times lower latency. So you can now transfer data between, um, from, the, from the LabVIEW block diagram on one PXI embedded controller and receive that data on another embedded controller in under six microseconds. That means you can now transfer data between two systems in roughly the amount of time it takes for light to travel from the Austin, Austin Convention Center just down the street to the Texas State Capitol building. So all these new performance benchmarks are really exciting, but in addition to that, PXIMC enables multiple CPU modules to be integrated into a single PXI chassis. These capabilities increase the PXI platform's ability to address the needs of applications such as real-time test, RF signal intelligence, and the application Mike had been talking about, HPC in a loop. Okay, so that's cool. Um, it's, it, we've effectively made PXI into a high-performance computing platform. So, Mike, what is this application we want to try to solve? Well, we wanted to build this fun demo to, to show an HPC IL application. But some background, the European Southern Observatory is building their extremely large telescope. And to get a feel for how enormous this telescope is, it's big. it's big. I get it. And those aren't inflatable pyramids. <laughs> and the, basically, the diameter of this telescope is 42 meters. And uh, it, the modern telescopes, like the ELT, require an enormous amount of computational power to maintain the mirror stability and even more to correct for atmospheric distortions caused by the atmosphere. The M4 mirror is a fourth mirror. It is a 2.5 meter uh, deformable mirror surface made up of a reflective, thin reflective surface stretched over 5,000 actuators. And each of these actuators have to be adjusted to correct for the atmospheric distortions. So these images from the Keck telescope show their adaptive optic systems in work. They can achieve 20 times, 25 times better image resolution with their adaptive optic systems. OK, and you've got uh, a 3D model of how this adaptic, adaptive optics work. Well, right, of course, I built it up in LabVIEW. So let me nice. show you how an adaptive optic systems work. Wavefronts come into the telescope and are split and received by a sensor grid. And they received with no atmospheric distortion as evenly distributed points. When wavefronts come in, the control system um, has to detect whether these points are changed. Basically, single points of stars get distributed. When the atmospheric distortion kicks in, the control system has to measure the, the uh, slight deviations in the sensor grid and adjust each one of those 5,000 actuators under the deformable mirror um, in order to compensate, bring those sensor grid back into alignment and thus correct for the atmospheric distortion. All this has to complete 500 times a second, giving us a loop time of two milliseconds. Wow, so this, these telescopes are really just big control systems uh, where you have to close the loop. And, uh, but I don't see a telescope and I don't see any stars so what is this contraption that you've got over here? So here we're demoing the entire adaptive optics control loop. We're acquiring images 
and from those images, we're performing the math and operations necessary to determine what corrections need to be applied to the deformable mirror to eliminate the distortion. So instead of a, a, a sensor grid, we're using this, this grid of points. And we don't actually have a deformable mirror, but we're modeling the 3D mirror, we're, we're displaying a 3D model of a mirror as it would correct for that image distortion. So you can see right now that our 3D model is relatively stable, and the instability you do see is primarily due to vibration of the stage. So now we need to add some simulated distortion to our demo. Okay, so now he, he has a lighter. Uh, please don't burn down the convention center. All right, um, we'll try to avoid that. What we're, what we're gonna do is insert a heat source between our camera and our grid. Okay, are there any pyromaniacs in the room? We, we need help getting this thing lit. I hear something. Where's our backup? Oh, All right. there, there we go. There we go. So now that we've added the heat source, the position of each of the individual points in the grid is changing from the perspective of the camera. Once this gets going a little bit, all right, now we're going. So as this gets a little warmer, you'll see that the, the camera or the 3D model will start to change a little more dynamically as it continuously adapts to the new input and, and because of the distortion in its field of view. So this grid of points simulates the typical input we receive in an adaptive optics application. This camera is acquiring the image of the grid and is calculating the individual position of each, each point in the grid and offloading that data to the, to the embedded controller. The embedded controller is then streaming that data over these four PXIMC links to these four rack mount servers, which are each performing some intense matrix multiplication. The servers are then streaming the data back to the embedded controller, which is combining all of that data and, and modeling the 3D mirror on the screen. So to these PXI controllers are pretty fast. Do we really need all of these other uh, uh, processors in play here? Well, actually, John and Jason, actually what we're showing is we're not leveraging the compute nodes yet. So what we're showing is that the embedded controller is tackling this whole problem. It's a large matrix vector multiply. But it's limited in its resources. We need to split the problem up, distribute it on multiple compute nodes. And we need a high-speed data network like PXIMC. So what do you think is going to happen when we turn on PXIMC? Now we're engaging the compute nodes, distributing the problem, and we can keep up with our two millisecond loop time. So we're, we're tackling about, this is about 1 16th of the ELT challenge. So we would need 64 compute nodes for the real telescope. And it can scale up to solve that problem. Now, I still, I can't quite figure out, you know, how fast is this? What is it really doing? Right, so we were struggling with how to describe this. this everyone's familiar with the inverted pendulum control problem, it, it's pretty difficult. This computational system can actually simultaneously control 320,000 inverted pendulums. All right, so, uh, yeah. So five years ago, an inverted pendulum on one computer was impressive. Now we've got the, the power of 320,000 of those. Very impressive, so uh, this is a new spec, and as you can see, we prototyped some products, so uh, we're excited to see that come out. Uh, for real. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sean.